Thanks for watching Explained. New videos every month. Ping pong diplomacy. What's so special about it and why is it so significant? Let's go back to 1970. The US didn't recognize this China as a country. Instead, they recognized this China. Some quick background. China had a civil war and the two factions were the Kuomintang, or the KMT, and the Chinese Communist Party, or the CCP. Eventually, the CCP won, and in 1949, the KMT fled to Taiwan, where they set up a non-communist government compared to the government that the CCP set up, which was communist. The government that the CCP set up is called the People's Republic of China, or PRC, and today is in control of this land. The government that the KMT set up is called the Republic of China, or ROC, and today it's in control of this land. Nowadays, the PRC is usually referred to as China, and the ROC is referred to as Taiwan. The UN was formed in 1945, four years before the KMT fled to Taiwan, so when the UN was created, the KMT was in control of mainland China, and they were given the seat on the United Nations Security Council and they were recognized as China. The US also recognized the KMT's government, the ROC, as China since the CCP's government, the PRC, was communist. Remember, this was right after World War II and during the Cold War. The US was against communism and communist governments. There's another reason that the US didn't really like the PRC. See, during the Korean War, when North Korea invaded South Korea and the US along with UN forces went to the aid of South Korea, China joined on North Korea's side, just when UN forces pretty much took all of Korea. This turned the tide of the war and the Korean War ended in a stalemate, it's still technically going on today. Anyway, back to the PRC and ROC thing. Since the US recognized the ROC as China, they had no diplomatic relations with the PRC, and as the 1950s and 60s progressed, mainland China grew in power. But wait, something happened in 1960. It was the beginning of the Sino-Soviet split, which was when the PRC and the Soviet Union went from being close allies to having a somewhat frosty relationship for reasons that are worth a video in itself. Basically, there was a split in the friendship, and by the time Nixon became president in 1969, this split was solidified. Nixon saw this and sought to take advantage of it. He thought that if America could get the PRC on their side, it would help the US in the Vietnam War, since they were funding communist North Vietnam. The PRC, meanwhile, thought that if they could get America on their side, it would help them in a potential war with the USSR, as the PRC and USSR had several border conflicts and skirmishes. So, the stage is all set for the US and the PRC to come to a rapprochement. They just needed a spark. Ping pong was that spark. In 1971, the World Table Tennis Championships happened in Japan, and Japan's quite close to China. The US table tennis team was sent to Japan for the World Championships. While they were there, they received a surprise invitation from the Chinese government. Why? Well, Mao Zedong, the then leader of the PRC, wanted to open diplomatic relations with America, as mentioned before. Plus, the 11 members of the delegation that the PRC invited were members of the Black Panther Party, a communist political party in the US. They then played friendly ping pong matches with the Chinese team and toured famous Chinese landmarks for about a week. Then, the Chinese government invited more Western journalists, and soon, the US removed its 20-year trade embargo on the PRC. This opened channels for more talks to be held, but for now, they were secret. The objectives of these secret talks were to normalize diplomatic relations between the two countries, and these led to Henry Kissinger's famous secret visit to Beijing in July 1971. Next year, in 1972, President Nixon went to China, marking the end of about a quarter century of no diplomatic ties between the PRC and the US. This was only the beginning, though. Full normalization of diplomatic relations wasn't achieved until January 1st, 1979, when a joint communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations was issued, and from there, the status of relations between the US and the PRC have remained relatively constant despite some occasional tensions rising. What about the ROC, or Taiwan? Well, the US ended formal diplomatic relations with them and closed their embassy in Taipei, the capital of Taiwan, but they still maintain unofficial relations with them, and the US and Taiwan both have strong relations. So, that's how ping pong diplomacy helped normalize relations between the United States and the People's Republic of China. Be sure to subscribe and like, and thank you for watching Explained. New videos every month.